Hello. Today I wanted to make a quick little video about uh, GameCube controllers, and this probably goes with uh, a lot of different controllers as well. Um, I've already got this one taken apart, but if you've got some that are sitting around and are very well used, like this one, you notice uh, it has this much play in the stick, which is kind of detrimental to you playing it <laughs> uh, very well, you know, obviously. The center starts about there then, so I've only got that much room, that much throw in it, uh, which is definitely not going to go all the way up ever. So you'd probably be walking through your games quite a bit. My phone went off, sorry. Uh, but nice thing about GameCube controllers, and like I said, this might go for a lot of other controllers as well, uh, like a Xbox controller or anything else with two, um, two control sticks or um, yeah, analog sticks in it is if we look at this, this is the C-Stick uh, little board which goes in right about here somewhere, I don't remember. Um, if we look at these, they are, if I turn this, one of them's got a different color on the inside, but they're basically the exact same stick. Um, and this C-Stick is good, it has almost no play to it, whereas obviously this one is totally shot. Um, so basically what you can do is, uh, if you've got a couple bad controllers, or even if you don't think you're going to be using the C stick as much, or don't use it at all, you can, you know, I mean, it's kind of a long, a long process just to get a good uh, main control stick. But you could swap these out, swap the two, um, and get at least, at least this stick working. But uh, I've got two controllers here that are both pretty bad. Uh, I got them for my brother's place. And basically, what I'm going to do today is uh, swap these sticks over. Um, I'm just going to pull the one from here, and then I'm going to pull another one of these out of that one here in a minute. Uh, but yeah, just uh, unsolder them, which is probably the hardest part of it, uh, simply because it's got a lot of points on there that you have to get rid of. Uh, it's got, you know, three, three, one, two, three, four, so ten whole points. So you need to you need to be able to desolder something pretty uh, efficiently. Um, I think I've got a solder sucker around here which I'm gonna have to use or you can use a solder wick um, which basically is just a, a braided copper that you press onto the solder joint and then press your um, soldering iron on top of that uh, and then it'll kind of absorb the solder like a like a sponge I guess. Uh, and that's another way to get them off but you're gonna have to actually remove that all that solder because there's no way to just slowly rock this off really. Um, I guess you could probably do that if you did it really slowly and it would take you like an hour, but um, it would also probably take you an hour to get rid of that solder uh, if you didn't have a tool, you know, slowly removing it with, you know, paper or something, trying to get it to stick to something and just kind of wiping it off. But anyway, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, first off, I don't actually own a um, tri-wing screwdriver. I never have, but you're going to need one to open these. And what I do... I've got this little piece of uh, bar, it's actually aluminum, which probably isn't the great, greatest thing to make a screwdriver out of, but uh, uh, let's see if I can do this without going into macro mode. If we look really closely, I've filed it down into kind of a tri-shape. Actually, let me just go into macro and I'll show you. Okay. Uh, I've, I've filed it down into a kind of a tri-wing shape like that. It's not very even, I'll have to clean it up here, but basically I'm just taking a file and uh, you'll probably have to have a, some some pretty good geometry skills to get these uh, basically even from each other but uh, basically just taking a file and uh, on the edge of it and making little grooves and then going all the way around trying to make it as uh, evenly spaced on, on little things as possible and then you'll have to uh, get this one a little bit better Good file etiquette is to only only go in one direction because the teeth only go in one direction. And when you go backwards, uh, it may not matter too much on aluminum, but if you go backwards on a uh, like a hard piece of steel or something, you're kind of ruining the teeth on it. They're not meant to to travel in that direction over a material. But uh, yeah, get this just a little bit better. But obviously, the end of this is still square. Uh, and we want it to be pointed, so we'll just kind of knock off these points. 
a little bit. One of these days I will get the correct screwdriver. I just uh, haven't needed it because I've been doing this. It just takes me a couple more minutes. And I had one of these already ground down, but I don't know what I did with it. So I have to make another one here really quick. But uh, yeah, if you if you have the right tools, you can make your own tri-wing out of something. Might take you a little while, but uh, obviously you probably don't need to invest in the tools. You probably just invest in the tri-wing screwdriver. But uh, let me get this uh, nice and not crappy, uh, and then I will show you that it actually does work. And I'll open up the other controller here. So here's my little tri-wing. And uh, just sticking it in there, using a lot of downward force to keep it in there since this is a soft material. If it slips out, it'll probably ruin my bit. And obviously, I don't have a, a handle on here, so. Might be. Nope, maybe. I think I got it. Looks like I ruined it too. Well, I thought I had it started, but maybe I don't. There we go. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to redo that. I don't think it was quite square or triangular, so it didn't really fit in there well, and I probably could have pointed it a little bit better, but got the screw out. Um, another quick thing that you might be able to do if you have one of those little jeweler's screwdrivers, those little flat ones, you can generally uh, easily uh, stick that in there, kind of into the middle of the screw, and uh, that'll give you just enough torque to get it out, or at least receive them enough torque to get it out. But uh, you might screw up your screwdriver as well, but uh, that's another way to get it out without a tri-wing. But uh, let's go ahead and get, uh, get the solder in on this guy. So... Alright, while my soldering iron's heating up, uh, once you get your control going this far, right, <laughs> this. That. once you get your controller down, strip to the uh, the main circuit board here. Um, one thing you don't want to lose is the uh, little weight that goes on here, the cam or you know counterbalanced weight thing basically that makes it rumble because uh, I seem to have lost mine I don't know where the hell it went I don't see it here uh, but since I'm putting two controllers together in the first place I don't think that'll be too big of a problem uh, so don't lose that <laughs> um, and then there's two little tabs on this black plastic part that you're gonna have to switch over a little bit to get to the points the solder points for the that part that stick and then you will also need to at least remove one of these to get this out of the way completely. Uh, I think I'll just do that. Obviously, uh, since you've got your soldering iron out, if you break a wire off or something, it won't be too big of a problem to put it back. In fact, let me get some solder out for the drawer. Maybe it's up here. The solder's right there. But uh, this here my primitive solder sucker. Uh, basically what it is, is uh, this one's got like a Teflon or silicon, I'm not sure what it is, tip on it, so it doesn't melt very easily. Uh, and you just uh, melt the solder. Uh, and while it's still melted, you kind of set this near it and suck it up. And it's really hard with one of these sometimes. you got to get the rhythm down, you got to get your dexterity up. Uh, they make some spring-loaded ones that you pull or you click a thing down and it latches so that way you don't have to worry about the squeezing action and you basically just set it there uh, melt the solder and then click the button and it'll suck it up with a little uh, plunger kind of in a, the reverse of uh, a turkey baster it's just like pulling it out really fast and those are not too expensive and they're a lot more easy a lot easier than one of these I think this is just something we had lying around uh, probably 50 years old or something, but uh, I just noticed my battery is about to die too, so let me go change that while this soldering iron is heating up.